CO2 laser machines are available in two configurations, basic and extended. The basic configuration includes the machine housing, laser tube, optics, motors, and some other parts. Extended equipment includes honeycomb and conveyor tables, additional laser head, rotary device, more powerful compressor, chiller, scanning camera, and a special laser head and CO2 machine controller for metal cutting. This is Watson. We've been producing laser machines since 2003, and in this video we will tell you which configuration to choose. Let us start with a basic one. Firstly, the machine must have a body as reliable as Bruce Willis and a frame with a minimum thickness of 2 millimeters. The size of the working field should be suitable for your application, and a through hole at working field level allows you to work with larger materials. Good models have extendable supports and wheels for mobility, as well as a compartment for trash collection. For safety, it is important that all water hoses are separated from the machine's electrics in separate compartments, unless you are prepared to take the risk. Next comes the laser tube. For engraving, you need 40 to 60 watts. For cutting, you need 80 to 120 watts. The average life of a good quality laser tube is 7,000 to 10,000 hours. Just long enough to make you feel like a real professional, or a real zombie if you work non-stop. It is important to choose universal tube mounts that allow horizontal and vertical adjustment of the tube position. The potentiometer allows you to manually adjust the laser power to fine-tune the settings or change them during operation. The next point is the optical system, which consists of three mirrors and a head with a lens that focuses the laser beam. The mirrors must have convenient screws for alignment and the ability to correct their position. It is said that experienced laser users can get a perfect shave by looking into one of these mirrors. The laser head must have a secure lens mount and easy access for lens cleaning. An extended nozzle is better for engraving and a shortened nozzle for cutting. Air hoses must be able to withstand high pressure. Watson machines can deliver up to eight atmospheres. As for the motors, three-phase motors are more powerful and efficient than two-phase motors because they have three windings, which provide smoother rotation and reduce vibration. It is important to position the motor in the center of the Y-axis to distribute the load evenly on the shaft. Otherwise, the shaft will become a dangling sausage. Belts, hand sensors, guide rails, and gantry are also important for the laser machine. The belts should be 3M serrated. It is best to place them on top of the gantry to avoid fire. Inductive end sensors are better than mechanical sensors. They last longer and work more accurately as they are not affected by deposited dirt, dust, resins, and direct physical contact with machine components. When choosing guides, it is best to go for guide rails as they are the most reliable and stable option. For the gantry, choose an aluminum profile with reinforced corners to maintain the geometry of the gantry in perfect condition, even after 10 years of active use. Now it is time to talk about optional equipment for the CO2 laser machine. CO2 laser machine optional equipment. Let's start with the types of work tables available. The standard work table is made of anodized aluminum, which helps to prevent the laser beam from shooting back into the material. You can use a honeycomb table to work with thin materials, but it is better to choose an iron table because it allows you to use neodymium magnets to hold these materials. The work table can be either static or liftable, a decision that must be made before purchasing a laser machine. A static table is suitable for materials up to 40 millimeters thick, whereas a lift table is required for larger materials or when installing a rotary device. The chain mechanism for lifting the table is more reliable than the belt mechanism. The work table can also be a conveyor table for coil material handling. The rotary device, now that we have mentioned it, is used for machining cylindrical workpieces and is only suitable for use on models with a lifting working table. Some laser machines can be equipped with two laser heads working simultaneously. In the Watson range, these machines are referred to as duos. The standard compressor supplied with a laser does not have pressure control. We therefore recommend that you purchase a pressure-controlled compressor, 
as this will greatly increase the possibilities and quality of your work. The standard pump supplied is only suitable for laser tubes up to 50 watts. It requires an 80 liter water tank, but dust and dirt will inevitably get into the water and therefore into the tube, reducing its life. This problem is solved by using a chiller that actively cools the water. If you have any questions about choosing a complete set of laser machines, please write them in the comments or contact our managers for advice. This is Watson.